We are five weeks away from the 2024 Iowa caucuses, and former President Donald Trump's lead is growing in the state. According to the latest uh, Des Moines Register, Des Moines rather, rather Register poll, Trump has surpassed 50 percent support among likely Republican caucus goers. He leads both Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley by double digits. So for more on this, we're joined by CBS News campaign reporters Aaron Navarro and Nidia Cavazos. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Nidia and Aaron. Aaron, I'm going to start with you, though. Tell us about what this new poll says and why Trump is coming out even stronger. Amarine Vlad, good to be with you. It tells me that despite all of these candidates coming to Iowa, uh, I cover Ron DeSantis primarily. He's done this 99-county tour. He's got the endorsement from Governor Reynolds here. Despite all of that, the Republican Party still shows no signs, really, of leaving Donald Trump. If you look at the poll, the electorate is not really there for a Trump challenger. Trump leads with independents, with evangelical voters that DeSantis has been making overtures to. And on the issue of the economy, which our own CBS poll shows it was a real top issue for voters that voters think the president can do a lot to address. Uh, most Republican voters I've talked to think the economy is their most important issue, and they think it was better under former President Trump. And his lead has remained constant as voters had that top of mind going into 2024. Uh, Nidia, you were at, uh, at Randy Feenstra's Faith and Family Cattle Call event over the weekend. What were the main takeaways and how was the tone there different than from the recent debate? Yes, well, good morning. Well, when it comes to the tone, there definitely is a major difference. When we see candidates in a forum like this on a different platform than on the debate stage. On the debate stage, for example, we know that candidates are going to be able to talk about policy, why they're running for president. They're going to attack each other. It's going to get aggressive. And when things get personal, that's not necessarily always a positive thing on the debate stage. But at Saturday's forum, most of the questions directed at the candidates were, in fact, on personal matters. Candidates such as Ramaswamy, Haley, and DeSantis, they were able to talk about their faith, their family, their personal motives, their personal lives. And for example, just to give you an example, um, when it comes to Nikki Haley, she was joined this time around by her 24, her 25 year old daughter, Rena Haley. And this is, she's not someone we necessarily see on the campaign trail with her mother. But most of the questions allowed the audience to be able to get an insight into Haley's personal life and just really what's going on overall behind the scenes. So it definitely helps to have this sort of platform and to be able to see candidates in a different light and we're able to learn a little bit about their lives such as Ramaswamy his reasons why you know he's always accompanied by his three-year-old son you see DeSantis accompanied also by his wife and it, we just see these candidates under a different light that's not necessarily always possible on the debate stage. Aaron over the weekend uh, former President Trump once again uh, appeared to sort of reiterate uh, his dictator remarks uh, that he said in a recent interview. He said in a speech in New York, I want to play some of that. Baker today in the New York Times, he said uh, that I want to be a dictator. I didn't say that. I said I want to be a dictator for one day. But the New York Times said, and you know why I wanted to be a dictator? Because I want a wall, right? I want a wall and I want to drill, drill, drill. All right, I still don't understand those remarks, but I'm curious as to how other GOP candidates are approaching this, Aaron. Well, the candidates are not necessarily condemning it, but they're using it as a point to show that the Republican Party needs to move on. So, for instance, Governor Ron DeSantis was asked, as he has been in the closing weeks of this Iowa caucus, why should I vote for you over Donald Trump? And on a laundry list of things that he mentioned was this one line about how he is not for personal retribution like Trump is. He says, I am focused on your issues, not my own. For someone like Nikki Haley, she mentions how uh, chaos will follow. Trump if he gets into the office. So they're not necessarily addressing, you know, or condemning the actual comments or the substance of them, but they're saying it that it's another sign that Republican voters need to move on from him. It's remarkable, uh, the idea of even putting the word dictator right. and the United States in the same sentence, forget right. the time period, uh, is something I never thought I'd hear. Uh, but Nidia, a new Wall Street Journal poll shows that Nikki Haley, if we're talking about alternatives, is the best Republican candidate to take on President Biden. The question, of course, for her campaign is uh, if she doesn't do well in Iowa, 
What does that mean going forward? It doesn't mean anything if you're not in the race. Yes, of course. Well, at this point, it's too early to tell. You know how long Nikki Haley's going to be able to stay in the race. And much of this is going to depend on her success that we're going to see between January and March, how well she does in the Iowa caucuses, the primary in New Hampshire and South Carolina. And this will determine if she's going to continue on the momentum that we've already seen and if this is going to be enough to where we're going to end up seeing a Haley and Biden ticket. Now, if this is a situation, if this is a case, then of course Haley has a big advantage, according to some of the latest polls. You know, this is a significant 17 point lead over Biden. And this is something that Haley has been talking about at her town halls, specifically here in Iowa this past week. And, you know, she touts on this success, saying, I'm the only candidate who at this very moment can beat President Biden. And of course, this is well received among her audience and its voters it amongst her crowd that, you know, they're looking for an alternative. And while some of them may be undecided, at this point, they do know two things. And it's that they don't want a President Trump. And they're very dissatisfied with the current administration and so if it came to the situation that it didn't end up being Nikki Haley versus Biden then of course they would continue very much to still support Donald Trump but they're seeking this alternative because they're not necessarily looking forward to that reality. All right Aaron Navarro, Nidia Camazos, thank you both. Appreciate it. Former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is weighing in on Trump's 2024 bid and if he'd take on a cabinet position. On Friday, McCarthy sat down with our Bob Costa for CBS Sunday Morning in his first TV interview since announcing his retirement from Congress. Will Donald Trump be the nominee? Yes. And the Republican Party? Yes. And if Biden stays as the nominee for the Democrats, I believe Donald Trump will win. I believe the Republicans will gain more seats in the House and the Republicans will win the Senate. Can he count on your support? Yes. That's an endorsement. I will support the president. I will support President Trump. Would you be willing to serve in a Trump cabinet? In the right position. Look, if, I, if I'm the best person for the job, yes. Look, I, I worked with President Trump on a lot of policies. I, we work together to win the majority. But we also have a relationship where we're very honest with one another. McCarthy said he does not consider Trump to be an author authoritarian, and the Trump campaign should focus on, quote, rebuilding, restoring, and renewing America.